Oh, why hello YouTube. Tonight we're going to be talking about batteries. Pretty much no one should buy the battery pack I bought here. I'm doing this as an experiment and to really push the boundaries of what's possible with batteries. If you're sensible, you'll just buy some lead acid batteries or some lithium ion phosphate batteries like everyone else does. All right, so let's talk about these batteries I've bought. They're uh, made by a company called Boston Power. They are typically used for car manufacturers. So they're kind of batteries you'd find in your electric vehicle, but they can be used for anything. They are lithium ion batteries, not lithium ion phosphate. My friend Jason actually imported these batteries to use in another project, and he ended up not being able to use them because he built his enclosure too small. So he offered to sell them to me uh, to use in my uh, camper van. The costs of these cells, the batteries themselves are actually not too expensive. They're about 3,400 New Zealand dollars. And the problem is the shipping to get them to New Zealand costs a fortune, and that was $1,800. But altogether, that was still cheaper than buying lithium ion phosphate batteries here in New Zealand by about $800. So it was still worth going with these instead of lithium ion phosphate, which is. So the question is, what's the difference between lithium ion, which these are, versus lithium ion phosphate? What I didn't realize is there's a huge number of lithium chemistries. So lithium ion phosphate is just one type of chemistry of lithium batteries. These particular cells are lithium nickel oxide and they're a bit different from most normal lithium ion batteries in that they are a bit safer. Most lithium ion batteries uh, include cobalt, which these do not. So these are kind of a compromise. They're not as safe as lithium ion phosphate, but at the same time, they're a bit safer than normal lithium ion batteries. I hope so anyway, because I'm going to be sleeping just above them. So we all know the difference between lead acid and lithium batteries. You get way more cycles out of your batteries. You get you can use more of the battery, so down to 80% instead of say 50% for your lead acid. And they provide a much more constant voltage across your voltage. They also are way more expensive. Lithium ion batteries need careful battery management, so you have to be running a battery management system. So let's talk a bit about these cells I've bought. So they're 3.65 volts nominal, and that's for a pack of eight batteries, which eight cells in parallel. Each pack has 42 amp hours, which has 155 watt hours of energy. So because they've got a voltage of 3.65 volts, if you want a 12 volt battery, you need four of these together. If you want a 24 volt battery, which is what I want, you need seven of these batteries together. Now we've got a little issue because we've only got 48 cells. It makes it a bit awkward because what would be ideal is to have seven cells in series and then seven in parallel, seven, seven is 49, but we've only got 48 cells. So what we've decided to do is make an eight series pack, which means the voltage is going to be about 29.2 volts, which is higher than a normal 24 volt battery. The advantage of that is we can use all our cells. So that means we have a total of 7.4 kilowatt hours of power, and it's 252 amp hours at 29 volts. Now that's equivalent to 612 amp hours at 12 volts. The other neat thing about these cells is how many cycles they can uh, do. And here's the kicker, if you only discharge them to 75%, you'll get 5,000 cycles, which is amazing. So assuming that you discharge them to 75% every single day, they should last 13 years. We 
started off with a design in SketchUp, of course, figuring out just what the layout of the battery would be, what size it will be, and what we're going to make it out of. We'll have a sheet of polycarbonate to go over the top and the front edge so you can see into it. So we started off by making the ends for the case and we use a CNC machine here to put the holes in exactly the right place. There's the program that we're going to use. It's just so precise. Here's the battery packs from Jason's uh, battery. So we had to dismantle the packs from his battery and slide them onto our new rods. They're sort of sprung loaded, so uh, there's a bit of tension to keep them uh, together. And you can see here, we just stack them on. Quite a lot of pressure to keep them all tight and make sure all the contacts between the batteries are good. Here's a completed pack, so we've got all the rods in. Next up, I had to make a base for the battery. So this is uh, done with pocket holes. And man, this is the first thing I've done pocket holes for. It's really easy. I love it. I can do all my cabinets like this. Thought this would be a good, good thing to test it with. Plywood's been stained. So we're gonna have the battery box sitting on top of the wheel well. And we'll be bolting that onto the sides of the van using roof nuts. Here we are putting in the first rev nut into an existing hole. So once we've got the first rev nut in, then we can drill holes uh, to get the positions correct and precise for all the other holes. I marked where I wanted them generally. Next up, drill the holes. And then put in the rev nuts. Finally drilled the holes in the cabinet and mounted it into the wall. So here's the finished battery pack with the sides and base on. Next up, the fun stuff that is wiring up the battery management system and the electronics. We estimated it would take about three days to do. It ended up taking two and a half weeks 